Behind me here is one of the big new launches at the Southampton Boat Show. This is the brand new Princess F65. Now it literally only just made the show by a matter of days, but we're very pleased it did because it is a big step on in the Flybridge range. So it replaces the F62. Uh, obviously it is an F65 this one, so it's a little bit bigger. We'll just take a very quick look at the stats. You can see length overall is 66 foot seven inches with a beam of 16 foot nine inches. Now, it has a fuel capacity of just over 4,100 litres, but I believe you can get a slight extension to that to around 4,400 litres. But let's have a look on board and I'll show you what makes this different and fresh and larger in every sense than the F62. So first up, let's starting on the stern, we've got a big hydraulic bathing platform here. You can obviously get a good sized tender on board this but then we've also got some really neat tricks going on. So you can see there is a rather lovely little bench down here with a window behind it that leads into the crew cabin, which we'll have a look at in a minute. But first of all, let's open this door here because there's a rather nice surprise in here. Now check that out. It is a purpose-built locker for two C-bobs. So you can see they store nose down in the locker. There is a charging plug in there so you can charge them while they're in storage but what a neat installation that is and a rather lovely pantograph style hinge that holds them neatly in place now let's also have a look at the crew cabin because that in itself is rather remarkable now the old f62 only had room for one crew in the crew cabin now this not only has two it also has a proper shower compartment not just a, a wet room but look at this, it's a really good space. Not just in terms of volume, but also in terms of the fit and finish. I mean, this is like a proper guest cabin. All the woodwork here is absolutely the same look and standard as the inside of the boat. We've got really good storage in here. A Couple of full height cupboards, not hugely deep, but all nicely fiddled to keep everything in place. There's another big hanging locker here. You can see that's a really good big one. And then I mentioned the heads. That is a proper ensuite bathroom. Look at that. Plenty of space. It's relatively plainly finished, but actually a nice white gloss GRP. It's nice and bright. And look at that, a proper walk-in shower. Now on a 65 foot boat in the crew cabin, I think that's pretty remarkable. To be honest, you could very happily use this as an overflow for your guests. If you've got a couple of extra kids, they would be very happy down here. But let's go on and have a look at the main event. We step up, we can see we've got steps either side. So we can go up either way. Let's go up this way. You can see there's also a couple of very neat shower installations in here. It looks like it's actually the fitting, but you can see when you pull it out, that is in fact the shower head. So that just fits very neatly within the actual stairs up look at that and those are the controls so neatly integrated you wouldn't even know they were there over on the other side you can see we've got the shore power cable coming out from under there and there's a separate little space for that to come out of there so it doesn't trap the cable and then we've got the electronic passerelle that whirs out of there and gets you to the quayside when you're moored stern two in the mediterranean now you can see we've got the all the stern gear here got the winches and big cleats and these really chunky gates that keep you nice and securely in place and there's even a little stowage area there and then really lovely cockpit table here you can see it's the beautiful teak finish but not just straight grain you can see they've got rather nice detail here they've got contrasting angles going on but look at these little details too the tiny little inset steel buttons and matching ones here so just when you put it down it means you're not putting wet wood on wet wood and either damaging it or allowing it to, to get wet and soggy and rotten in there tiny little details but a lovely touch and you can see when you do fold them there's actually also some stainless steel drinks holders tucked in there now whilst we're here i was going to show you under there but we'll do that when we do the engine bay let's go and look at the main event so cockpit itself again lots of storage either side really good places to put your shoes when you come on board or you'll stow the cleaning gear there we've got the bilge and the shut off valves for the engine room 
and check this out. Look at that. It's a third helm station. So again, when you're berthing stern two in the Mediterranean, you've got that exactly where you need it. You can stand at the controls here, looking over the stern, see exactly how close you are to the key. And you've also got your twin thrusters in there. So not just the throttles, you have got bow and stern thrusters too. Really neat little solution, that one. Close it up. Now you can see you've got sliding glass doors here and a big opening window overhead. So you can see that's on a big ram assisted strut so that just swings up tucks neatly into the flybridge overhang keeps it out of the way but means you have a really nice big opening into the saloon now this is an aft galley layout on this size of boat it works really well because it creates a nice little bar area here you can see that there and it means perfect you can serve your drinks straight out into the cockpit but everything is to hand now lots of nice curves around here Again, it's small details, but rather than having sharp angles, you've got these lovely curves and everywhere. Full height fridge freezer, and a little locking button just to hold everything in place. If it does get a bit rough, we've got lots of storage. There's the bin there, Oop, close that one up. But again, big cupboards, four burner Bosch hob, induction hob, proper oven in there. Under here, we've got a little half size dishwasher, really good Franco one and a half sink and then under here there is a big draining locker in there overhead two I should show you a couple of lockers up there and there is a very neatly concealed extractor hood built under that so very discreet you can't really see it's there until you bend down but really good size windows all around look at the scale of those absolutely magnificent and then dining area, right opposite, exactly where you need it. And another very nice example of Princess Woodwork here. You can see this great big table. I might just see if we can temporarily move that. But you can see how that just folds over. And then you've got a matching style dining table right by the doors too. Again, with this interesting sort of cross grain effect, beautiful stainless steel hinges. But even when you fold it across, it looks just as good so you've got this built-in curved handrail and the drinks holders now more storage under these benches you can see i won't do the other one but you get the idea there's two big drawers under there and then as you come forward really nice to see a grab rail there just to help your way through the boat but nice leather wrap gra grab rail got a little bit of a step up and i think even here there is another drawer look at that so that's where all the plates are neatly stowed away so small step up but easily negotiated and then this lovely expansive big sitting area so this is the main saloon lounge area there's a lovely little glass coffee table but look how much seating there is all the way around here and very nice to see one on the other side too so you can have a sociable conversation with someone facing them as well as this c-shaped sofa here and it's a lovely kind of linen style fabric but also relatively low level so that you can make the most of this huge window here look at that you can't even see the frames of it when i pan along over on this side there is of course the high low tv i'm not sure that has been fitted yet but you can see that the recess that's where it whirs up from and then another little sideboard area here which is in fact a kind of mini bar you can see there is a ice maker in there there is a fridge in there I'm not sure if we well there you go you can just have a look nothing particularly exciting about that no beers in there and then yet more storage under the helm seats and again look how nicely this is done rather than just an open locker there are little drawers in there you can put all your tumblers your wine glasses your covers for all your helm gear on soft clothes uh, little runners but really smart little bar area i also love this area here so you can see we've got the helm station over to starboard we'll have a look at that in a minute but first let's take a look at this uh, kind of it's not really a navigation spot but it's more than just a forward facing seat it's a lovely little curved sofa but if you look down here there's a smart little recess for putting your reading glasses or phone we've got the controls for the opening window i'm not sure I'm not sure that, I don't think the electrics are on for that, but there is an opening electric window that drops down there so you can get some fresh air in here. 
But look at this, this is the bit that I love. You can swing that round and then you've got a really smart little workbench area. You could just imagine if you need to send a few emails, you could pop your laptop on there, beaver away, get them done. And then when you're all sorted, pop it back and you're back into socializing mode. Really like that solution. A nice leather wrapped sort of fascia dashboard so you don't get any reflections on that. And then Helm Station itself, really good looking Helm seats, nice and supportive, very smartly done with this kind of diamond stitch effect, the princess logo woven into it. And even on the back, we've got these wooden inserts in them, really smartly done. And then even under here, I think there is another little button there. You can see access to all the fuses under there so perfectly situated if anything does go off you can easily find them foot rest here so that when you're perched on the seat you can rest your feet in exactly the right spot and then a lovely opening side door I'm not sure if that not sure again I'm not sure that's live at the moment but you can see oh there we go it is on big pantograph hinges that swing open so you've got immediate direct access to the side decks perfect if you want to have a word with the, somebody helping with the ropes or lines or indeed do them yourself and of course you get a lovely flow of fresh air through here too now the helm itself very neatly done it looks modern it looks clean full controls exactly where you need them we've got the tilting steering wheel I uh, can't find the controls for that at the minute but you can see that that tilts up and down much easier with two hands and then the throttles on a little plinth here just brought towards you a bit as well as the trim tab so that when you are sitting back in the seat you can very easily reach them without having to stretch forward got the two touchscreen raymarine mfds with the control panel for all the engine kit in between them very clean very simple very effective thrusters again here we've seen on the extra third helm station at the back that you've got twin electronic thrusters I think they're variable proportion thrusters and you've got a control for those touch screens if you want to don't want to reach forward to hit the touch screens you can control them all from here too got air vents in there we've got cup holders grab handle exactly as a helm station should be laid out now let's go down and have a look into the main accommodation see there's a lovely wide companionway leather wrapped handrails and even here there's some nice detail detailing so rather than just having a straight piece of wood we've got this rather lovely not quite sure what you call it sort of not not quite fretwork but rather than having a solid piece it's just nice to have something a bit more detailed a bit more interesting a bit lighter and then the accommodation itself let's start forward in the vip now you can see the beam carries quite a long way forward here it's actually a really nice wide vip cabin Big hull windows on both sides with little opening ports. Lots of nice detailing. You can see all these different fabrics. There's the kind of lovely linen style here. There's a slightly more sort of almost woolen tweed effect. Very discreet storage up above the bed everywhere. Lovely big mirror here. And then under there is a little pull out drawer for makeup and bits and pieces. Very discreet under lighting all around here. Television in the bulkhead and again lots of nice curves everywhere you look all these cupboards have these nice sort of corner curved pillars full hanging locker in there more storage overhead all the way around and of course under the bed itself there's another couple of big drawers in there and even little details like these magnetic stoppers for the doors you can see down there is just a little magnetic stopper that holds it means you don't damage the handles it holds them securely in place and of course big ensuite bathroom very nicely done again big mirror bouncing light around good size windows both in the main bathroom and in the shower just means you've got lots of natural light really big shower stall glass door keep it all separate here's a nice curved wood effect in here lots of storage under the sink too really good size bathroom that and then as we make our way backwards there is another 
twin cabin on the starboard side. So let's have a look in there first before we have a look at the bathroom. But you can see we've got twin beds in here. Again, very good headroom, even here. And look at that, there's a good four or five inches over my head, I'm about six foot one. A Couple of decent sized single beds and they are on a little moving switch. Let me see if I can find the right button. I think it might be that one. There you go. You can just see that start to move across. So if you want to make that into a double, you can do that was all the way across. You do have to open it to make the most of the storage because you can see there is storage both in that little bedside table there as well as under the beds. He's got opening lockers. Not sure if I can, there you go. There you go. You can see there are lockers under the beds too. But really nice to be able to make that into a double if you have got a couple staying on board. Little television on the bulkhead. Another big hanging locker there. And then you can see there is ensuite access to this bathroom. So at night time, that becomes your own ensuite bathroom. But you can see there is also access from this sort of lobby area so that it's the day heads during the daytime. But another good sized bathroom in here. Again, proper separate shower compartment. Again, natural light coming in through there. And then the loo tucked discreetly behind the door. But really nice to have the option of a, a, a separate day heads that people can access, but also a really useful ensuite at night time. Now moving back, there is a fourth cabin. That's one of the big wins over the old F62 is there are four cabins rather than three. Now this is clearly a bunk cabin, but actually it's not a, at all a bad size. The one below doesn't look quite so wide. Oh, hang on a minute, there goes my phone. Let's just kill that. But you can see that's a relatively narrow berth down there. But the one on top has a bit more room because that's alongside the hull window. But actually, for a kid's cabin or something, they can have a lot of fun in here. Again, storage overhead, down here. You get the picture. Lots of places to store your kit. Controls for the domestic air conditioning in all the cabins. Nice big light switches. And then moving down towards the main event, this is obviously the master cabin. But before we get here, you can see even here, there's some neat little lockers. So quite a deep locker under the staircase there. And these ones here can be used for the washer dryer. You can see there are vents in here so that it can vent any hot air that gets in there. But that has got the washer dryer installed in there. Or you can have separate ones or just keep that as a big locker. And then into the main cabin and this has the real wow factor too look at that we've got great big hull windows again on both sides really huge actually and then a little opening port in one corner and then a very nice little sofa over on the starboard side here you can see sorry the port side we're facing stern now so lovely little curved two-person sofa there locker in there, nice grain leather surfaces on top. Again, all this lovely under lighting, another little locker there, big TV set into the forward bulkhead, and then a whole side, side unit of storage. And all of these are on little sprung hinges. And look at that little pop-up mirror. So you have got a very discreet little vanity unit built into this sideboard. Love that. But also masses of storage space all the way along this side table. And even here, the detailing is rather lovely. So look at this, for instance. It's just set into the bedhead here. It's a little strip of wood. Now, there are several wood options on board this boat. Uh, this is the walnut, the satin walnut. But you can have it as gloss, or you can have, I think, three different shades of oak. You can have a light oak, a dark oak, or a kind of grayish oak. Again lovely fabric style effect, little pool lights set into the ceiling. Even the bed tables have little drawers in. And of course, the bed itself, I think they're accessed from the foot of the bed. But you can see there's more big drawers under there. And then I love this little dressing area too. So this is kind of the entrance or sort of lobby to the bathroom. But again, big full height mirror here. And then huge hanging lockers with little hidden drawers within those. So let's see, you can pop your shoes or socks or whatever you like in there. Very neatly 
tucked away. And look at the matching grains here as a good example of it. You can see the grain running along here and it runs absolutely matched right the way through those two locker doors. And then a big walk-in bathroom, pretty much full beam. Again, with a whole window and a separate opening port in the shower itself, perfect exactly where you need it. So any steam or condensation can make its way out there. Really nice marble floor, big mirror, towel rail, really clean and even the sink. You see the way that's actually built into the surface there. So there's not a separate wash basin unit. It just all forms part of that surface. Very smartly done. And again, a couple of lockers under there. So let's make our way back up through the boat. That is the lower deck accommodation. Another lovely bit of curvature going on there. Very subtle, not too showy, but really neatly done. Now then, first up, let's do a very quick tour of the side decks. You can see there's good good sized side decks on either side. These are these huge windows, and this is a rather smart little touch. You see that little blue swage line in there, little color detail. Lovely decks, big cleats halfway along, and towards the forward end, so you've got two sets of side cleats. And then this fabulous socializing area up on the foredeck. Look at this, really like this. You can see big sort of U-shaped or C-shaped seating area here. Got little teak drinks holders, big storage lockers on either side. These are the covers for the seats up here, but you could also put your lines and fenders in there. Very discreet little coffee table down there. But look at the way they've done these clever sun pads up here. These face both ways, so you can either have them forward facing, they can lie flat, you can have them angled so that you can lie there and read a book, or you can flip it all the way up and then have it facing towards the other sofa on the other side and have a really sociable, entertaining zone where you can sit here and have your cocktails of an evening chatting around that little table. And the other neat detail, check this out, right where you need it, next to the sunbeds, a refrigerated locker so you can pile your beers or cokes or waters in there and have them bang next door to the sun pads. Love that detail. And then come forward to the anchoring zone and a big old anchor locker in there. All the chain neatly stows in there. And beautifully done stainless steel fairlies. Look at the way that that's perfectly sort of fared into the GRP there. So you've got lots of curved stainless steel metal to take any wear from the rope so it doesn't actually harm the gel coat. Big stainless steel anchor, very neatly done. Now that goes all the way back down. So you can see, we'll just squeeze past the, that's the door into the cockpit. Actually, I'm not gonna go that way because there's a line across it. Let's go back round this way and make our way up to the flybridge. But look how easy it is to walk along here. There is a grab rail here too, if you need any extra support. And these are slightly flared to make it a little bit easier to make your way along the side deck but then up to the flybridge itself. And again, this is one of the big selling points of the F65. Look how big this flybridge is. So it stretches all the way from the helm station here, we'll have a close look at that in a minute, all the way back to this huge sunbathing area here. Now this is another very nice detail. I love the way that they've actually made this, they've offset this sunbed a little bit so that you can walk all the way around. So you see that? You can come on both sides of the bed. You don't have to jump over somebody who's lying on one side. We've got a sun awning overhead. You can see there's the electric controls. And that's this huge retractable sun awning. You can see that goes all the way out to the end of it, but that also retracts all the way in so that you can really catch the rays when you want to. But I particularly like the way they've done that offset, offset that a little bit. Now you can see there's a big storage locker under there. I won't open it, but you can see how that hinges up and you can put covers for all this flybridge up under there. Lovely big teak table, huge dining area here. Again, with that cross grain teak, big comfortable curved seating, and then a fully equipped wet bar here. Again, the good grab rail there. There is a sink, a, oh, nearly caught my microphone there. Big chilled drinks area in there, deep enough to put bottles of champagne or prosecco for your aperitifs big 
Kenyan grille there. Again, beautiful mouldings on these. And then under here, you've got an ice maker. We've already seen the fridge in that chill locker and more storage under there for your cleaning kit or whatever it may be. A couple of really good seats here. Now you can see this is all covered by a great big hard top with a big folding fabric sunroof. And that retracts all the way to this point here. And then you've got lighting under here too. So very nicely done. Lights all the way around it, but a huge opening so that you can retract it and have a fully open flybridge if you want it. Very well done, Helm Station up here. Almost the exact same repeat of what you've got downstairs. Got those two big Raymarine screens, the little one in the middle for the engines and the thrusters. And on that note, we'd probably better make our way down to the engine room and discuss that a little bit. Right. Okay, here we are down in the engine room. And here are those two big MAN V8s, 1200 horsepower each. They should give top speed of around about 31 knots. And cruising at 22 knots, you should get a range of about 270 miles from those 4,100 litre tanks. Very lovely clean layout here. You can see we've got the big raw water strainers here. We've got a fresh water hose if you need to wash anything down. Got the fire suppression system here. Very nicely insulated all round. You can see we've got these sound and heat insulation. Big fans helping to keep everything cool. We've got the whisper to power generator up under here. And then we've got what looks like, here we are, the side power hydraulics. Now that's another change. On this boat, you don't have to have a gyroscopic stabiliser like you did on the F62. You can have a full hydraulic fins fitted side power fins so again it gives you the option of either having fins or a gyro stabilizer we've got all the domestic air conditioning system up here big exhaust coming off the engine and it's really nicely lit down here as well you can see these overhead lights but with all this reflective tape the led lighting big white engines it's very nice and light and there's even full standing headroom you can see i can stand here no problem at all so that is the engine room and there is also one other space that I was just going to show you. There is also a lazarette in here with access to some of the other systems. Swivel that round, lift him up. There we go. You can see there is another lazarette down here. I won't crawl down there because there's a bag for some of the boat show kit down there, but you can see we've got access to a lot of the AC power, the shore power down there. We've got the 24 DC, the batteries down there, but rather nice to have this all separate from the engine room. And of course, it's a really good place to store stuff. You haven't got those hot engines running in there. You have got the exhaust coming through, but actually better for storage. You could probably put inflatable paddle boards or things like that in there. So really useful extra lazarette separate from the engine room. So there we go. Let's finish up here in the cockpit. That is the brand new Princess F65. I hope you've enjoyed the tour of the boat. I've really enjoyed having a good look around myself and showing you some of its many features. Thank you for watching and I look forward to seeing you on the next one.